Aquarius Sun and Rising, welcome to a video on the transit of Jupiter in Pisces, which at the time of this recording, which is in June of 2021, um, that is where Jupiter is in. That's what sign it's in. And uh, on June 20th, there's going to be a Jupiter retrograde, but um, Jupiter will stay in Pisces until the end of July and go back into your sign of Aquarius, which is good um, as well. And then at the end of the year, after Christmas, Jupiter goes back into Pisces. I think it's after Christmas. It's at the end of the year in any case. So, and then in 2022, it will be in for a longer stretch of time. So um, for you, Aquarius, this is occurring in the second house of earned income. This is also the house of self-worth. So um, Jupiter is the planet of expansion, the planet of luck, opportunities, and positivity. So needless to say, this can be very good for um, your um, earning capacity. Uh, you may be earning more money in, in during these times when uh, Jupiter is in this uh, second house. And remember that... This is going to, the timing of it is going to depend on your particular chart. If you are listening for the sun in Aquarius, um, it really would behoove you to look for your natal chart. If you have your uh, time of birth, you can plug it into astro.com for free and other sites or other sites too. I just think that that's what I use astro.com because I think it's a clear looking chart, but it, just to find out where it is you know, what the, the second house cusp is so that you can see when the transit is going to occur. But um, this is, you know, the, the point is that the, the uh, natal chart, if you're a sun in Aquarius, um, the natal chart may be more helpful and, and accurate in terms of mundane events. I think of the solar chart more as your you know, your ability to make things happen versus um, maybe the pre-programming or, you know, the blueprint that you came into this life with. But both are, are valid for sure. Um, so you can, you can just have a positivity about your ability to earn money and also a positivity about your self-worth. So it might be, there might be a boost to your self-worth with Jupiter here. And having um, greater self-esteem, you know, if you, if you believe in the law of attraction, it can mean that you are going to attract even more good stuff, you know. So that, that has like um, an added effect. So it's like uh, Abraham Hicks often says, the better it gets, the better it gets, you know. So both of those things can just feed off of each other in a positive way. But, you know, just in a general sense, you may have an increase in income. I remember when I had Jupiter transing through um, this sector in my natal chart that I did receive a, um, a sum of money. And I always thought it had to be money that you earned. But it said on CafeAstrology.com, want to give them a shout out, it said that um, it could be, what was it, um, a major monetary gift. I'm, I'm paraphrasing it. So a gift, I mean, so, so that's something that you didn't earn. And that's what I, um, that's what happened to me. So it definitely can happen, but I want to bring in the first house because even when Jupiter's retrograding, we tend to think of, um, Jupiter retrogrades as times when everything goes haywire. Um, but when it comes to a benefic planet like Jupiter, um, or Venus, there might be actual uh, benefits that are, are still coming your way. Now, they could be opportunities that passed you by uh, before coming back to, to, to give you another, a second chance, or maybe something that you laid the groundwork for that wasn't really, the, the timing wasn't right, and now you stand to reap the benefits. And this can be in a general sense in 
various areas of life because the first house to me is kind of a catch-all house in terms of like um, the basic direction that your life is going in and um, I wouldn't necessarily just focus on one area, just saying anything in your life. But um, getting back to the second house, uh, yeah, you could actually be earning more money and having that positivity that this is possible and a sense of abundance or like actual abundance because there is really the tangibility factor when you're dealing with the second house. This is an earth house. This is Taurus's house in the universal chart. Um, and um, because of that, it's not something that is pie in the sky. It's something that you can hold in your hands. And so that makes it that much better because you really believe it. You really embody it. Um, another thing, too, is that any, anything that you have to deal with, whether it's loans, which, um, you know, I have always thought came from the eighth house because it is other people's money. What I think they're referring to uh, cafe astrology is that the second house are financial institutions and they do mention that so these can be um, favorable for you in trying to obtain secure money um, when you have Jupiter in this house lucky you know I would say and and this is also the house of possessions too it's not just money literal you know per se but other other um like luxury goods um, and things like that. I, I started this video again, and it's funny because I, I don't think I said it this time, but I'm recording this outside, actually, in a courtyard. So um, the birds are starting to chirp. It's getting close to dusk, so I think the birds get more active at this time. But boy, is it nice to be outside I used to, when I first started doing readings, I did them at this university uh, under a tree. And I would, uh, I'm talking about personal readings primarily, because I actually found it quieter than being at home sometimes. And it was just such a great vibe. So I guess I'm going back to uh, my roots, <laughs> so to speak. Um... Now, I was going to say, one of the things that they mentioned, too, is overspending. And um, this is something that normally, you know, we would guard against. Because Jupiter, one of the, if you want to call it the um, downsides of Jupiter, which is really hard to uh to even uh, fathom because it's so positive but um is over optimism okay so um when it comes to second house the person can feel like they have unlimited money and just go on a spending spree so uh, normally i would you know be very serious about that but i think aquarius is a sign that tends to be quite frugal you can you know uh, argue your case against that, uh, uh, you know, decision or whatever I've come to about that um, observation, if you wish, because uh, you would know yourself better than I would. But um, I, I think that perhaps this is because not only are you ruled by Uranus, but you're also ruled by Saturn. And Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn and tends to be quite conservative and that includes you know with money economical <laughs> um, so and one of the things that they said is that if um, Jupiter they said um, I'll just read exactly what they wrote if Jupiter trines planets in the sixth and or tenth houses this is also a very very favorable period for success in the work that you do. And um, so certainly, um, you know, both of those houses are connected to work. 
the tenth house with your career of choice, but also, you know, your success level, uh, your, you know, your reputation, your accomplishments, and the sixth house, the work itself. And so I would say as well as, as um, just success, I would say that this idea of being able to have work that you love, you know, uh, attract work that you love, especially with the sixth house, because um, it's, you know, even if you have a prestigious job that I would associate with the 10th house, that kind of, um, you know, the 10th house can be status. Even if you have a job that is of great status, if you don't like the actual work, which would be the sixth house, what you're doing, then it's like you still will dread going in, in, you know, into work each day, even though you might brag about it to people. It doesn't really sustain itself very long. So um, that could be very lucky of finding work that you truly love. Um, another thing they mention about is that sense of worthiness. And they said, well, I, I did touch upon that. I was thinking about it in a different sense. Um, and they were talking about how that's very important in, in attracting uh, abundance to you. You have to feel worthy of it. Um, I think also, like, if you have things that cost a lot of money, yes, we could call them luxury items, but also just like big t ticket items that you feel are um, necessary. They're not just, you're not just doing it. Uh, they're not like um, optional. This can be a time when you have the ability to be able to purchase those things. I mean, and that can run the gamut. So that, that sounds really good to me. And even when it goes back into the first house. So I hope that you uh, enjoyed this and that you're stoked for this uh, Aquarius. And uh, if you would like a personal reading, please click on the link below to see what types of um, readings I have available. Thank you for listening. Take care.